Welcome to Actor Chat. I'm your host, Jason Bateman. Today we're talking with Bill Hader, star of Barry. Um, Bill, Hello. thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks. Hi, I'm Bill. We're also with Actor Chat, and we're here with the Ozark star and director, Jason Bateman. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, Bill, I, I drew the short straw, and I'm going to ask you the first question. <laughs> um, so, uh, can you tell our, our audience at home, how did you... Uh, first come to Barry? Um, Alec Berg, the co-creator, and I, uh, just is one of those rare things you actually got set up by your agent and it worked. Do you know what I mean? Like your a five-minute date? Yeah, yeah, five, like, oh, you're going to go have coffee with a guy. And you went, oh, okay. And so we went and had coffee and we talked about ideas and then we kept on talking about ideas. We would just go and meet for breakfast once a week. Wait, so was this somebody that you, did you say your agent or your manager? My agent. Did your agent also represent Alec Berg? Yeah. These My, people. They're just... So here's a way I figure I can double dip. <laughs> I'm going to want you to go out to breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee. I don't care what the hell you do, but his name's Alec. Yeah. You guys figure out something to do. I Make can get both sides money. of it. Yeah. Subject matter's up to you. Yeah, I don't care what it is. I just need... These guys are rain yeah. anchors. But, uh, but it actually worked. You know, sometimes those happen and you meet the person. You go, cool, and then you just never speak to him. But that one... I hear he's a good guy. He's the best. You know, Silicon Valley... Curb Your Enthusiasm, Seinfeld, like he's working on all these things. So we, we hung out, we talked, and then we came up with this idea. And I remember saying, well, what if I was a, a hitman? And he went, oh, I hate hitman. I hate the, the you know, the guy with the skinny tie and the two guns. It's just, <laughs> it's just so lame. I'm holding it sideways and looking rad and all that. And I just went, no, but it would be me. <laughs> and he went, oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> you know, so. The reluctant, conflicted. Yeah, just a dork. He was like, you just, I go, me being me would be interesting, like, a, and not and not pushing it, you know, keeping it grounded or something. And he was like, oh, that's cool. I like that. And then we said, oh, he should be in an acting class because it was, you know, the thing he wants to do, he should be bad at. And so the, did you think that the acting class and the whole sort of the hater approach to being a hitman and that he's reluctant and he's not super, super comfortable in it, that it would be like kind of a... Hitman and actor class would be sort of like this, uh, uh, a base to kind of figure out uh, basically a story about who somebody wants to become and yeah. sort of an identity well, thing? Well, we didn't have that initially. It was actually, again, we pitched it to HBO and, and Casey Boys was the one who was like, oh, so he's becoming a, he's taking an acting class so he can, because he's shut off emotion, the acting class is making him, um, He's learning how to be a human. And you and I and we looked went, at each other like, went, yeah, Exactly, yeah. yeah, no, it's totally what that's we what meant we'll do. to do. Yeah, how, what took you so long to figure that out, Einstein? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's how we came to it. Yeah. And did they give you 10 episodes right away? Or did you no, have we to? We had eight, and we just said, let's just do eight. We kind of like the small order. I don't know about you. We yeah. like the smaller order where you can kind of craft 30 minutes, right. and I kind of, the way we always describe it is I tend to build up. I kind of see it as one big story because I like movies. Right. So I just kind of go, oh, it starts here and it ends here. Right. And chop it up And Alec eight. goes, let's chop it into eights. And we have another writer, Liz Sarnoff, who worked on Well, Deadwood. it's not very good. She's, can barely speak yeah. English. Um, no, she's amazing. Uh, Lost and, uh, and Deadwood and things. And she, they were really helpful in teaching me of like, no, Bill, but each episode has to have its own arc. <laughs> and each character has to have, you can't just make it a big story and you know what I mean? Now there's a lot of ways I can uh, do this for you. Um, one of them is I could stab him in the nut. That's something I, I did once. And I'm very comfortable doing it again. Was that a thing when you were doing Ozark of going, oh, I know we're headed to a place, and then how do we, but how am I keeping the, the emotional track of all these characters? You have so much going on in that. Show. Yeah, it was, it was, it was um, we wanted to do uh, basically like a 10 chapter movie, right? Yeah. So like a, a 600 page film and, and trying to chop all the, find, find where in this beginning, middle and end where the natural story chops would be yeah. into these little parts. Um, and the original um, uh, uh, goal, uh, intention, was, uh, was for me to direct all of them. That's, that, that's why I wanted to do it. I, I wanted to sort of a, 
a glutton or a, a masochist, depending on how you look at the role of directing. Um, I, I wanted to, to take on that, that challenge. And then as we got into um, budgeting and scheduling, we couldn't really create enough time to prep them all. Um, so I ended up just directing the first two and the last two and hiring some people to do the middle three, or the middle six, middle three um, slots, because we do two at a time. But then that that sort of that EP position, as you know, you you've got this that 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 privileged position of oversight that that a director um, has in film, where you can satisfy that that creative challenge yeah. uh, if you want to, and um, you do a great job on 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 your show. I've seen four of the five. I hear the five one is worth skipping, so I'm, I'm going yeah, to wait. Yeah, I would six. just go straight to eight. Actually. Yeah, is it okay? Yeah, you can follow it. Um, but um, but yeah, chopping it all up into parts uh, is is kind of a, as opposed to just doing ten episodes where it's just kind of a beginning, middle, and end of each one of those, and they're yeah. kind of standalone. Uh, is is a fun way to do a, a a series, but that's more of a series as opposed to what what we're trying to do, which is kind of like as I said, one long movie and then earn a sequel. You know? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Also, do you do you ever feel like that with the creator of Ozark, everything that that was there ever a fear of um because there's like massive changes that go throughout those characters and like what you're just describing of like normal television the kind of thing is we're going to reset and try to keep this stuff the same do you know what i mean at least i knew when we started doing barry alec had come from this kind of seinfeld world where he was like oh but if we do that then the whole everything changes and it was like yeah <laughs> do you know you and that's like kind it? of fair uh, the characters changes the whole dynamic of the world can change you right. know but you're shooting in order yeah. right um so then you can sort of pivot and react to well this storyline is kind of working or that's like not that compelling or yeah. this character is not really um, or this character is, and so let's write further and deeper into that one for for towards the end of the yeah. season. So you can react to what's working and what's not, right? As opposed to, you know, cross board them all and shoot. Yeah, them. it's more like yeah, it's like it, like on. I guess what I'm saying is like on Seinfeld or something. You can never have like the apartment burned down. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. You could then all have, Warner like, Brothers would be a blaze. Then all Warner Brothers would be a blaze. <laughs> but I feel like there is this thing now, and I feel like. Both of our shows have it where it's almost this kind of glee of like, no, that's different now. It's like throw that out and now it's this now. It's you're like kinda where you're the, yeah, you kind of go, no, we need to be on the run. Right. You know what I mean? Where a lot of things go, well, wait, well, if they're on the wait, what happens? Wait, the, where does it take place? And right. Do and, you know what I mean? And that's I think that that is what the the sort of um, premium cable or streaming audience is accustomed to and, and expects, which are these big plot or premise swings that uh, are interesting to the audience. Like, oh, God, how are they going to keep the show going now? Yeah. And, and usually it manifests itself in, in killing a main character. Well, yeah, the end of Game of Thrones, I went, don't, don't, wait, what happened? You know, yeah, no they're all ghosts. I mean, I had no idea. What? <laughs> you. <laughs> Marty, stop. We have to call the police. I want you to forget it, okay? I, or do you want to just role play it? Okay? I'm detective whoever the... And you're the wife of the top money launderer for the second largest drug cartel in Mexico. Go. Jason Bateman. Yep, hi. Bill Hader. Sweet. What's it like? What's the difference between doing comedy and drama? What's it like wearing the mask, right. the, the happy one? Right. But then, you know, there's the other. I don't know if you know there's this thing. There's the comedy tragedy. There's these two masks. Mm -hmm. I have a tattoo of it on my back. <laughs> but if, <laughs> if it's what's really it like? Low. It's, it's very you, low. Your tailbone. We, it's a surprise. Um, <laughs> and under it, it just says breathe. Yeah, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's it like wearing the comedy mask and what's it like? Uh, what, what do you like? Uh, That's a great question, Bill. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a fella who uh, doesn't really do, and I'm not trying to be falsely modest, but I, I, don't, I don't do real funny stuff or real drama stuff with the characters that I play. I'm usually the guy standing next to the very funny guy or running away from the very scary guy. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's not much of a of a of a big 
change for me and what I'm doing. Uh, I, I, what I really like to do is kind of be us. I like to be the, the audience. Yeah. Um, and so I'm really attracted to characters that are sort of the everyman or the straight man or the sane guy or really just a proxy for the audience. And it's probably why I'm drawn to directing as well because like that, that lane is sort of the, the, where the audience kind of has their end to, yeah. to what's going on. And, and as you know, as a director, you, you're kind of pulling all those levers and deciding what the audience is seeing and feeling and hearing and all that stuff. So um, it's not a, not, a, not a huge difference for me, but I, I do get, I think what people mean when they say that comedy is harder than drama. I feel like that when I, when I am asked to do something that's kind of wacky, uh, that you have to still be believable. Yeah. And it's harder to be believable when your character is is crazy. Yeah. Um, it's it's a heightened bar of of believability. Like you know, it's it's I think it's it's simpler to just be real to react to a situation as opposed to reacting in a real way to a situation if you're batshit. Like, yeah. That's 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 uh, that's harder to do. Well, that's what was so nice about. Rest of development when I was watching that show was realize and then starting to do this as a career and everything how hard it is what you're doing in the show is like everyone has all this stuff like, and I've done it a lot as well where like we were talking about earlier being the base in a thing yeah and train wreck going. you did it just, just seamlessly where and that takes a, a, a lot of discipline as 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 an actor I'm sure you felt like yeah where you go can I go wow you know go crazy here and that right, doesn't but work and you realize that well if if I'm as crazy as the crazy characters now we're all on Mars, and yeah. there's nothing weird about Martians on Mars. Like, yeah. I gotta be Earth, and then all these exactly. Martians are hanging out around me, slash us, the audience. Yeah. Then things comedically pop, I think. Yeah, I yeah. do too. You know how you and I talk all the time about my purpose? You think acting could be your purpose? I don't know. I just, I, I, don't, I just feel really motivated right now or something. Like, but, it made me feel really good. Okay, but what about what we do together, Barry? Being the lead on the show uh, and and trying to manage all the the apparatus behind the scenes as well and keep all the trains running and hire the directors and the actors and making sure the scripts are, are what you like and um, do you find that that's uh, more challenging than than you thought or that you wanted or is it is just make it even more fun? I find it fun because you know what it's like being when you're just the actor on a thing. And once you kind of understand how things work, it can kind of, like, I feel like that's when I started to become, like, slightly difficult or something. Because <laughs> I was like, you, see, you know, we can shoot out that wall and be done. Right. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, why are we, I worked on a thing once where we'd shoot one person's coverage, and then we'd turn around, our reset on my coverage, and in the middle of shooting my thing, they go, oh my gosh, that's hilarious, she should do that. And they would turn back around, shoot her coverage, and go back to me. Now you've and I would go, with the kids. Yeah, and I go, guys, 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 no, no, can we just, and it's the, it's a curse <laughs> in a way of knowing how you can make things work. So that's a nice thing, but I enjoy it. I just, I like, I know it sounds corny, but I like, I love being on set and I like hanging with all the technicians. I like, I love costume meetings. I like going to mixes. I love, going to camera tests with the DP and going like, oh, here's this version, this version, and I go, oh, that's cool, that's right. I like, I love grabbing scenes from movies and watching and going like, how'd they do that? Right. And, and learning like, well, they're actually in a really long lens and they're back and I go, oh, can we try that? And, and I don't know about you, but like I, as the nice thing about being an actor, I mean, I grew up wanting to be a director and a writer, I mean like, very young age, want, that's my thing. I was like making short films and stuff and then moved out to LA and, and then started acting, you know, and it was oh, this wow. weird, got, you know, taking improv classes and got SNL while I was taking improv class. Wow. And then it's like this weird circuitous route where a lot of my friends growing up when the first episode of Barry aired and it's said directed by Bill Hader, the amount of my friends from high school went, dude, you did it, you know, oh, that's, that's so, hey, congrats, you yeah. know, like they knew that that was an important thing. But I don't know if you relate to this, but I used to love the romanticism of like, 
you know, Stanley Kubrick wouldn't talk to Shelley Duvall when they were doing The Shining yeah. to get her into a place or whatever. And then I'm like, now that I'm acting, I'm like, you don't need to do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, right. as an actor, it's all you have to do is you hire the person and you go, yeah, man, like, do your thing. And if it's not, you could go a little this way, a little that way, maybe. But yeah, how do you that romanticism of it gets knocked out of you in a, in a, in a very healthy way, I think. So how do you, how, how, how do you, um, what is, what is your instinct when you, when you see an, an actor, so when you're directing and you see an actor playing a scene in a way that is wildly different than, than how you had imagined it either while you were prepping or maybe if you were actually writing it, is your, is your, is your instinct as a director to direct that actor to play it in, into the way that you have imagined it or do you try to recognize the version of the scene and the character that that actor is trying to do and then your notes try to help them g do that? Yeah, it's kind of like, well, it's two things. One, you're going, you, you know, like anything, you're reacting to them in that moment and sometimes great things come out of that. I've, we've, I've worked with actors where, you know, because, you know, like your show, Barry is very like, there's a very clear point to every scene and this is this leads to this, so we need to hit these notes or whatever. But my attitude is like, as long as that information has been out, whatever you wanna do. I mean, Steven Root's a guy that every take you get something totally interesting and different. So we did a, a scene in, in one of the episodes where he tells me I have to, yeah, he's like, you gotta kill this, uh, this Marine. And I go, I can't kill a Marine. And he did three takes angry with me, mm -hmm. standing up over me, mm -hmm. angry with me. Oh, that was great, yeah, man, you know? And I was like, I'm good, right. you know? And he went, I go try something. He goes, Bill, just stay standing. I went, all right. And he did one where he sat down and leaned in. He goes, hey, man, why don't we just, and he did it like this. And it, when they do that to you, you're just, you're not acting in that moment. Right. You go, yeah. and it, it did a different thing for me in right. a way, and I went, Okay, yeah, yeah, no, that was great. And Alec Berg was at the Video Village with Hiro Murai, who directed that episode, and they went, that was awesome. And and so giving people that freedom, because I don't know if you have the same experience where you, you know, directing actors, you want kind of the experience you would want as an actor, right? you know? And, I've, and I've, I've had those experiences where they come out and go, you can do anything, just have fun, and then you do a couple takes and go, hey, can you... Right. <laughs> On this one word, can you take a word? beat? There's then... a comma there for a reason. Yeah. Okay. You know, <laughs> and you go, okay, I'm now I'm a puppet for the. Or you get a little frustrated, and so you just go, oh, I don't want to put anybody through that. Yeah, I'm I'm just a big advocate of of letting people do that which you've hired them to do. As yeah. long as everybody has a mutually agreed upon finish line, whether whether they're actors or crew members or or whatever, um, you want them to have. Uh, um, the right to exercise their instinct as yeah. as, as creative people. Um, like how you get to A to Z is totally up to you. Just know we're starting at A and ending at Z. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I, 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 like, I really like being able to um, set, establish, and, 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 and maintain that, that vibe on the set. And is it hard when you have to do a big dramatic scene, like the scene in the pilot where essentially you set up the show? Yeah. It, and you're directing, how, what's that like? Because I remember going, God, he's directing this, and he has to give a ton of, you got a lot of, not to say, but you got a lot to say in that scene. <laughs> you lot, got a lot of words. It's a, <laughs> a long speech. You got a long, you got to be, uh, I'm just putting myself in your right. shoes. Okay, I'm directing this. I'm on my knees. I just watched this guy kill everybody. Right. There's no reason he should let me live. He's about to kill me, and I have to literally convince him not to kill me right. and basically set up right. the show. Right. <laughs> and you do it seamlessly by not... I thought what I loved about that was you didn't. it wasn't pushed at all. It wasn't a, a begging. It was like, oh, this guy's doing his... His job, this is what he's good at. He's right. giving facts, he's kind of going, I, I latched on to something, but my question is, yeah, in that moment, how do you, do you, after that you do that, do you go, I, 
I felt good or how do you Yeah, guys feel well, you it? know, you can feel, it's probably why you enjoy the directing so much is because acting is so comfortable for you. So it allows you to just uh, be open to the other parts of the process. Like, you know that jib's kind of moving over there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. If, that, if you know that it has to be all the way over here by the time you speak next, you're going to yeah. figure out a way to take a beat before you talk, you know, and so... Uh, some some actors are enjoy getting deeper and deeper into their part and like they can't be bothered with a mark on the floor if they're shadowing somebody and but for some reason I've always really been excited about what all these guys and girls do like yeah. making this fake life is is so it's fun. sneaky tough and and yeah. so I love being a part of those meetings too like you were talking about it's and you don't get any credit for for the 95% of the work that it takes to just make it Believable to make sure right. that that light's not in the shot and this boom's not in it and this chair yeah. was picked and from there then it's got a spike and that's 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 the interesting part but um, uh, the that scene in particular um, was simple because the the writing was was so good and all that stuff made sense and you just have to say it in a believable way. Um, what was difficult is that we had a lot to shoot that day and, and it was all shot at night and everybody's tired and you just have to go in there fully prepared like we were talking about before. Um, it, that was one of the big eye-openers for me as a director was was how much of the film gets shot before you start principal yeah, photography. I mean, prep is, is, is fully immersive and... As actors, you know, you think, well, um, let's get going. Uh, when you show yeah. up on that first day, it's like, no, no, yeah. guy, we're done, and yeah. you just need to hit your mark and say your line Wait. for the next few weeks, and yeah. and then we'll be finished. Yeah. I have a, um, a business opportunity that requires cash. Sir, yeah. there's no business opportunities that require that much cash, not legal ones. Well, I agree to disagree. Where's my money? How do you think, uh, you've been funny your whole life, I'm sure of it, um, but since you've been paid to be funny, uh, have you noticed that it's, that it's changed at all? Have, have you changed your, 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 your levels, your strategy on how you're going to make people laugh? Not, not really. I mean, it's all kind of, I don't know, yeah, you know, it's, it's like it's intuitive. It's like a weird, like we're talking about directing, I think, you know, you were just saying like, the reason I like prepping all that stuff is so you can get to a place where you can just go out and be intuitive and kind of go, well, I just want to try this and try that. And it's the same thing with comedy. I mean, I do think um, you sense like different generations of comedy, like certain things, you know, don't fly for, you know what I mean, for a you know, you just can't make certain jokes, you know, which are probably good. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Give me three things? jokes that you just can't make. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Goodbye, career. No. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's like a good example is like on, um, and it's a good thing, but, it, we, you know, it's like we on a, uh, when we, I would do Stefan on SNL and we would say midget. And then we got a letter saying, you can't say that, yeah. you know? And we went, you're right. And so when we went and did that again, I didn't, we perp, last time I did it when I hosted, we didn't say it and, and I'm fine with that. What you is know? the PC term? What is, what is uh, uh, little people? Little people, yeah. Yeah. So, and then, but the, I think that's a lot of people bristle at that because they think, uh, you're saying I'm a jerk, or you're saying my instincts are wrong, or this is so lame and doesn't matter, or whatever. And my thing was, I go, yeah, that matters to them. So I don't, why make them mad? I don't understand that. We, just, yeah. we and and also it is ignorant because I didn't, I didn't understand that. And I go, oh, yeah. now I understand. Somebody gave me a, a lesson about that on retard too. Like you know, just retard gets thrown out, thrown around yeah. a lot, and you know. Second, you have kids, um, and you go through that process of that the this this the, the the miracle first minute or two minutes when that kid comes out, and they just take them and they they run yeah, these yeah. arbitrary tests about whether your kid can hear, yeah. you know, um, yeah. whether your kid can see, uh, what the uh, and it's and you're going to take whatever answer they give you, yeah. and it's it's just such a miracle that every every kid or a lot of them come out, you know, with 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 ten toes and and fingers, uh, it's, I was like, oh, I get it. There's a million different words I can use in that moment. Yeah. And now when I read scripts, I will, I'll give those notes to the, to, to, yeah, to the writer. I'm like, I find, pull this I find I get to the same place too, and they go, oh, you're being, you know. But I work at South Park sometimes, and those guys do it. 
They yeah. go, oh, let's not. They they're known for being all ed, you know right. whatever and going against that, but it's not. It's you can so it just like, takes a little know, more work to figure yeah, out how to do the same joke. There's an empathy joke and, that you need. Yeah. That, that there's more of a I think I think it's a good thing, but more of an empathy and and good comedy right now, and also grounded stuff. I mean that that's the other thing is when I was younger, I always wanted to. Um, uh, to me, it was like Naked Gun, Airplane, the insane right. stuff, and and I realized one how hard it is to pull that off, and what those guys did by casting not just the real actors that you would see in those airport movies, mm-hmm. and that was the genius of that. You right. go, oh, that's part of why that works. You the no know? winking, the no winking, and yeah. playing it totally straight. Right. But it's it's Leslie Nielsen. It's not Steve Martin. Right. Do you know what I mean? And that's why it works. And you go, oh wow! And then, and then, writing stuff, you just realize how hard it is to keep the grounded stuff is way harder. It's kind of what we were talking about before with performing. You know, it's like, oh, like in Trainwreck, it's going, well, Amy's a stand-up and she's doing all this really funny stuff. And LeBron James, if it's me and LeBron James, I have to make him look funny, and right. he is funny. Right. But if I'm trying to out-funny him, the thing doesn't work. You know, and I. And I, and you know, and, and that kind of goes into the comedy of Barry too. Is we never, we never sit there and outline or talk about a script in terms of jokes or comedy. You go, you talk about it in terms of the story and the emotion right. and the logic. And then as you're writing the scene, you say, "Oh, what if he said this?" And we all yeah. Laugh. I noticed that there's there's really there's not a lot of jokes in your show. What you guys are doing for the most part seem to be creating these. Um, these these characters that are deeply feeling, deeply flawed. They're they're all pretty broken, and you're putting them in situations where their dignity is getting exposed. And from there comes the humor. And so, you would think that those scripts, I'll bet, don't table that well. Like there's not yeah. a lot of jokes. So I'll bet, well, if people read like, them and go, okay, like we got to see the performance yeah. matched with this yeah. this this character based comedy. Um, and the combination of those two things, mm-hmm. only then will it be funny. And so yeah. it's, it's risky to table uh, scripts like that, right? The, without writers. A bit. Or those studio. go okay. I do another show called Documentary Now. Those table awful because people are like, what are we watching? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's okay. Like Henry at a table, Henry Winkler at a table <laughs> read will, will sell anything. And uh, Darcy Carden, Kirby, you know, we have like, so, you know, Ryder Doyle, Andy Carey, we have all these great actors who can sell stuff, because you can get a comedy rhythm on a thing. But, you know, it's like, we'll have it in the outline, you know, Barry's unsure of himself, and, you know, uh, Cousino, Henry Winkler's character says, um, he get he gives him assignment, which is to do the Glengarry Glen Ross monologue. <laughs> and so we go, okay, so he, he has to do that, you have to do Mammoth. That's all it says, and you get what Barry's emotion is, but as we're writing it, you come up with like, I'm gonna give you 10 cc's of mammoth, and we all start laughing, and mm-hmm. then it's like, let the cat out, and all that. But that comes because you know the character, right. you know, instead of like, let's lead with a joke. Right. Um, How does this make us better actors? It loosens you up, prepares you for the unexpected in a scene, gets you out of your head. Okay. Yeah. Jason. Bill. Um, one of my favorite shows the last, I don't know, ever was Arrested Development. How was it? Uh, How was it too. doing the show? How was that experience? Um, the best experience of my life, I think. I mean, it's certainly the most beneficial experience for my life, uh, for my career. It was kind of a reset button for me. I was sort of... Did you feel that when you read it, got it, yeah. going, this is going to be a thing for me? Well, when I... did that? When did you go... <sighs> Oh my God. Well, I was, I, I kind of knew that what sort of career, what the, what the position of my career was at the moment. I, I was, I was just trying to get another job, trying to get a pilot. Um, and uh, right then, uh, television comedy was kind of transitioning from multi camera into single camera. Um, multi camera had sort of gone out of, out of fashion. And, um, and here comes this this single camera show that was not only single camera, but it was sort of a mockumentary. So it was yeah. even even more sort of deconstructed and like we don't need any of the stink from you know you you sitcom people. Yeah. And so when I got an audition for that, I I knew that that was a big 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 deal. And they probably don't want to see me, but somebody probably pulled a favor. And 
So I went in there very, very nervous and, and just hoping that I was guessing right with this character. And Mitch Hurwitz was really sweet to me. And, and great guy. Um, yeah, he's a nice guy. Great so guy. he, um, and then like the dream scenario happened where he followed me out after I finished auditioning and he said, hey, so you're supposed to come in for that other pilot I'm producing tomorrow, that multicam, um, but, but this, right? And I said, yeah, I, I love this. He goes, yeah. yeah, don't come in for that thing tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, oh, that's yeah. good. <laughs> so I got in my car as I called my agent. I go, I think we really did well. Oh, man, that's the um, best feeling in the world. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, we really didn't know if that show was going to last. I mean, there was, a, there was a cover sheet on the script that said, any actors that are not interested in having their dressing rooms be a honey wagon and there's no makeup, n no hair, n no lights, really no marks on the floor. It's going to be kind of a student film mockumentary type of style. So um, so the agents I was with currently were like, yeah, you don't want to go in on that. But my old agent had called me and she said, I, I noticed you, you weren't on the, 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 the sheets for this thing and I really think you'd be good for this. Tell your current agents to get you in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, her name's Lee Brolstein. She did a really, really uh, good favor for me there with telling me about that. But yeah, we thought it was just gonna be a really cool thing, but, but not really last. And it didn't really last, and it was a cool thing. And thankfully, the people in Hollywood watched it and then gave me when work When did you afterwards. feel, though, that it was, that was the, when, was there a moment that you can go, when we, oh, this is this helped me. Yeah, when we got we got a, a Golden Globe nomination, that was that was big because I yeah. think we were pretty close to getting chopped by oh. by Fox, and then we got that nomination. And they were like, "Damn it, we got to keep them on." <laughs> um, and then uh, and then uh, and then we got an Emmy nomination, and then we won that, and they were like, "Wow, um, we want to get rid of you guys." Yeah, uh, it still only lasted two and a half years. I think it was. Two and a half, three and a half? But it ruled, I mean, where I was at with, com, you know, that was right when you guys premiered when I started SNL, and that was all we talked about. It was like, did you see? It was like, um, I don't know, being a musician in the 60s and Sgt. Pepper coming out or something. Well, Everybody just goes, just, well, yeah. now we have to change everything that we were thinking about. Jeffrey Tambor, I think, was a really, really, really big, for me, he was a huge part of that. I remember he had the first scene of the first episode, first day, and he had this monologue, and uh, we were all off camera, C coverage was on him first, and it was the first time any of us seen w w what, was, what was the tone of the show gonna be, because we didn't do a table read, yeah. or if we did it, we couldn't really oh. tell what the tone was. And watching him do what he does so incredibly well, which is that no winking thing, yeah. I thought, oh, so we don't have to throw to the back row in this yeah. show. This isn't a sitcom Play with real. an audience. It's it'll grab. Well, they'll it's, see it. Yeah, it's not funny to any <laughs> yeah. any of these characters. Yeah, this is this that's is deadly great. serious. And I thought, ah, oh, that's what this funny is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, speaking of SNL, uh, when you just recently uh, hosted, was it was it? I'm sure it was a blast to, to host, but it would, did you, the one time I was lucky enough, it was like the best week of my life hosting, I, I, I thought this is the best job in the world. Yeah. I would love to be a part of this cast every week doing this. Did you, did you feel that going back? Yeah. That it's something that you really missed or? I, well, oddly enough, the week you hosted, I don't know if you know this, the Tuesday night of that writing night was the night they saw me. That was the night that I that I did a show in New York. No way. And Lauren Michaels and Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and Seth Meyers came to the UCB Theater to watch me do a show. Really? And they go, we got to get back because Jason Bateman's hosting. And we were like, oh, wow, what's that like? You know, I mean, my, He's a dick. Uh, I, yeah, they went, we got to go save this one. Um, <laughs> no, but they were, but I was, you know, um, like, wow, they're hosting. But that was the week that they saw me and, uh, and, uh, and then, but it was fun, you know, it's a fun experience, you know, it, I, well, going back is weird. It's like going, yeah, everything is true. It's like going back to high school or, you know, and you're like, oh, the lockers are different now. And, oh, this classroom is, oh, it's not this, it's not a classroom anymore. Wait, what is the, you know what I mean? It just feels different there. It's so impressive. But they just, they just do a great job and I love the current cast and it's just weird. It's like, I remember where Kate McKinnon uh, auditioned. Mm. And I laughed during her audition, which you're not supposed to laugh, but I, really? I went in the back and they went, you know, try not to laugh, you know. Why are you not supposed to laugh? I don't know, they like it if you don't laugh, but they laughed during mine, Tina Fey laughed during my audition. 
But I don't know if it's a spoken rule or whatever, but it's... Do they let you know that before you start your audition? Like, don't be surprised if you don't make no, anybody No, no, you start out, and I remember when That's I auditioned, terrifying. the guy, a buddy of mine went out before, and he came back, and he went, I just, I could hear myself walking around up there, it was terrible. And I went out and I auditioned, and I introduced myself, and I go, this is a character named Vinny Vedecci, and I just immediately started doing the, and Tina Fey, who I could see him, it went, ha! Like that, and I went, Oh, okay, good, and I relaxed. Uh, right. But Kate McKinnon, just watching her come out all nervous, and she did Temple Grandin at the Emmys, <laughs> trying to get a word in. As they were doing the acceptance speech, she's like, the story was based on my, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> it was based on my life, if I, oh, sorry. You know. And it was one of the funniest things I had ever seen, and I started laughing so hard that they were like, you have to leave. <laughs> the last time you yeah, come yeah, to audition. Yeah, the last time, we'll get Bill out of here, he's laughing too hard. But, um, but seeing those people now are the seniors and running the show is so interesting to me. I remember Kate was someone kind of going like, hey, you know, Cecily Strong, you know, Vanessa Bear and all these people. I remember coming in all, hey, how's it going or whatever. Now they're, um, they're the stars. But the crew know. of that, too, the infrastructure of that, the way that you guys don't really lock what you're going to do until Thursday? We don't lock. I didn't know what my uh, monologue was until about five minutes before we went out there. But the sketches themselves, in other words, their, their ability to prop those yeah. things and build those sets is like 24, 48 hours. Yeah, like sometimes less. We would do sketches sometimes on a Friday night and go have a meeting with Lauren and he'd be like, it's not working. Maybe instead of a, of a you know, a pirate ship, it should be a spaceship. That's go the, make it work. And right, they would and build wigs for that. Yeah, I, mean, I remember I was, uh, again, Vinny Vedecci sketch, we had a, a ostrich in it. <laughs> puppet and we went hey instead of an ostrich puppet can it be like a big mechanical horse like a, a horse that goes like this and they go okay and they made it happen in about 30 minutes it's and it looked great but but no my monologue i had they were we were talking about my monologue as the, the they were the the audience was loading in and lauren's going maybe it's about i'm happy to be back and you know he's kind of ruminating about it, oh. and I'm going, I'm gonna throw up. Right? <laughs> Can we please do this? And he goes, When in doubt, talk about your kids. And if you watch it, that's what I do. Really? <laughs> I start talking. Well, because the cue cards ran out. The guy was doing the right. thing, and then there was no more cue cards because Mike Coleman, the one of the writer, came up as I'm getting ready, and you know they're like, you know, uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, and I'm putting the thing on, getting Stop ready, about to go out. They got the stopwatch. They're looking at me, and he he's going, I think I got everything on the cue cards for the monologue, but um, if you don't, Lawrence said, talk about your kids. <laughs> so if you see it, the cue cards, Wally, the cue cards went out, and he just went. And I go, I just want to say hi to my kids. I want to say. <laughs>